In this video, I'll be talking about modeling success in poker. Now about four or five years ago, I heard a quote from Tony Robbins, which said something on the lines of, success leaves clues. If you wanna have success, find out the people have had the success that you define and model off them. Do what they do, uh, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. Now this was a big game changer for me at the time because I was trying to just do things my own way, figure things out try and find some new systems, a new approach that was different. And in poker, it's very easy to fall into that mode, try and do everything your way. But there's so many success stories in poker and so many people you can learn from that makes your life not only easier, but it's a better path, it's a faster path to model success rather than trying to figure stuff out yourself. So if I look at my own life, any area I've made improvements, whether it's financially, whether it's with poker, whether it's with my health, whether it's with my mindset, I found people who are good at what I want to get good at and I distill their practices and model myself off them. So recently, I started to uh, observe a few people who I respected. There's one, one's called Jay Shetty, who's got a good podcast and does a lot of YouTube stuff. Another one's Jordan Spencer, and another one is called Kyle Cease. And these guys all are very present. When, when they speak, they're very good at articulating. They can see they're very in the zone, in the moment when they're communicating. And I found out that a habit all three of them share is they all meditate between one to two hours every morning. So I was like, okay, well, if I want to be a bit more present, a bit more in the zone, in the moment, do you think that maybe meditating a bit longer because I was doing 20, 30 minutes? Could that help? You know, I was like, yeah, probably could. So I changed my habits and start, I meditate now every morning for an hour. Why do I do that? Because I'm modeling the characteristic that I want the end result of being more present. So I've seen people who are already more present, what they do, and I've started to model my days from them. Now, back into the poker context, this works exponentially well in poker. Like, what do the good people do that you're not doing? So uh, what you can do with this is write down a list of the most successful players in poker or the players that you want to emulate. So who, who is it? Who is it? Is it Fader Halls? Is it Phil Galfons? Is it Tom Dwan? Is it Phil Ivey? Whoever floats your boat, um, write down like who they are and what their characteristics are. Now, if you spend some time understanding like, how they approach poker, especially at their best. So when you're looking at people, always look at them when they were learning the most, growing the most, at their best. Often when people get successful, they can change their approaches a lot, but get in touch with what they did during their advancement years in particular. And then you compare that to what you're doing. So look at what you're doing right now. Look at what you're doing in comparison. So if you write down a list, what's their morning routine? What time do they wake up? What do they study? Who do they hang out with? And you, you realize they've got a probably very, very different life or they've had a very different life to what you currently have. And if you want to emulate them, you've got to start going, well, why? If they have this, this is the success I want. These people are acting this way. I'm acting this way. Why is that? And you realize you're kind of self-sabotaging yourself. You're not willing to do what they did. If you want the success they had, you've got to find out what they do and act in accordance with that. If you can do that, your success is exponentially more likely. So when you're looking at successful people, you need to think about what they are doing, not what they have. Don't worry about like the lifestyles they live and stuff. Worry about what they do, their day-to-day -day actions, their day-to-day -day, uh, habits, routines, the way they think, the way they learn, the way the books they read, the the areas of the game they work on. And you'll find right now that there's a lot of things that you're not doing that they did. And your goal is to get more and more in alignment with them. So maybe what I would generally do is I find three to five people I respect in a certain area. And then I look for a number of things that they all do in common. What do they all do in common? So if you look to the best poker players, you'd probably find all of them have very good study routines or very good ways of learning. Some of them learn in networks. They like to speak and chat with other good high, high stakes players. Some of them are just great with solvers and studying uh, well analytically, but they have a good process for getting better. They also have optimized their lifestyle way better than the average poker player. So when you climb the poker ladder from low to mid to high, you'll find the higher you go up the ladder, the more lifestyle optimization there is, the more Holistically, people look at life. The more they look after their health, the more they yeah, exercise well, eat the right foods, they have good morning routines, they have good stress management, they have good life balance. The higher up the, the food chain in poker you go, the more you see people have their life together and they're trying to optimize. The lower levels, get out of bed is hard. It's hard. Procrastinating is a big part of, a lot of poker players struggle with procrastination because 
they, they can't get themselves in, um, in control of their habits and routines. So uh, you've got to go, okay, what are the success, successful people doing? What have the people that you want to model, what have they done? And if you can get yourself in alignment with that, you can start living um, closer and closer to uh, um, how they live, there's a very good chance you can have more success. So my career, when I was playing the $300 heads of sit and go level, I decided I wanted to play the $1,000 level. And one of the things I did was like, okay, well, what do those guys do? What do those guys do? And I could see that they were grinding really long hours. They seem to always be online. They seem to, uh, um, yeah, be much more dedicated. And I was like, okay, well, if they're playing that much, that many hours, they're this dedicated. Okay, I need to be that dedicated as well. I need to be as dedicated as they are if I want to have that success. So I started acting as if. A framework I use quite often, act as if. Think of their destination you want and act as if. So if you were your role model, let's say it's Feta Halls or Phil Galfond, to say you were that person, how would you act? What time would you get up? How would you study? How would you learn? And you start to look for missing links, missing links in your repertoire. A lot of the habit stuff, you can, you can start to do that. You can start to act in alignment with that. And if you can't, if you struggle with that, it shows there's some sort of self-sabotage going on. You, want, you say you want this, but you can't act in accordance with that. So pick the lifestyle, pick the person you resonate with the most, the person you want to emulate, and start to model them as much as you can. And often it's just picking up on their habits, picking up on the way they structure their life, picking up on the way they think and learn. So often when I hear someone speak and I go, okay, this guy's clever, he knows something I don't know, I try to find as much as I can of that person, and I try to find out where did he get his viewpoints from. And often you'll see like, people get ideas from other people. So when someone's got a certain idea, they've generally read certain books or took a certain course or they've got certain friends in their network who think a certain way and they've gained that knowledge from somewhere. Nobody's just born with good knowledge and good expertise. So you find out what, how they got that skill set, and you learn that. See, I always, you know, when I respect somebody, I try to find out how they got that framework of reference, how they got the skill sets, and I try to model that. And often, like the, the fastest way is to go for their habits and routines. That's like the, the surface level stuff. Then the next level is okay. I've got their habits and routines down. How do they think? How can I start replicating how they think? Can I find out what books these people read? Can I find out what conversations they're in? Can I find out what where they're getting their information from so that they think on the level they think on? Because the brain's just very programmable. So if we program it a certain way, if you had if you had the exact same experiences as Phil Ivey from birth till now, very good chance you'd play poker pretty similar, if not like the same as Phil Ivey right now. So you've got to think about okay, the way I'm going right now is led to a certain outcome. Rather than trying to figure out everything yourself, success leaves clues. Who can I learn from and model myself? So think about that. Think of some areas that you want to improve as a poker player. Find the right people to model and your success will be much quicker. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a comment below to let me know who you respect in poker and who you like to model, either poker, life, or anywhere else in your life. And there's a free quiz in the description as well. If you click on that, it will tell you what, life, uh, what level your poker mindset is right now and also how to improve it with a free report for you guys to level up your poker mindset. Thanks for watching this, guys. Make sure you hit the like button before you go and there's gonna be plenty more coming from me very soon.